point I'm trying to make is that the argument that we can't address climate change while still growing our economy is simply not true. What this study doesn't account for is the cost of inaction. Citigroup, not normally considered a wild and crazy place, predicts that inaction on climate change could result in $44 trillion worth of lost global GDP by 2060. So the risks and rewards of acting versus not acting have completely flipped. Business as usual, the preferred outcome for our opponents doesn't work anymore. Hi everyone, this is our very last day of room for discussion at COP21 in Paris. Today we are at the Sustainable Innovation Forum. Ruben, who are we going to interview today? Yeah, we have three guests today. Um, we have uh, Ingrid Bond, she is the CFO of Waterfall. We are going to question her about the role of the energy companies in climate change and what they, they, they can do for us to uh, lead to a more carbon neutral world. My name is Ingrid Bonde and I'm the CFO of Vattenfall and I'm here to participate in various panel debates and to listen in on what the uh, discussions that are going on. The utility sector, the energy sector, uh, is uh, quite severely affected by the energy prices that are cut down by 50% for the last five years. So we embrace the transformation. We want to make the transformation to renewable energy system, but we don't have the money ourselves anymore. So we need the financial community to assist in this transformation. And the financial community has been a bit hesitant, but are now gradually coming in. So we see interest from pension funds and others to help uh, and be partners in building wind farms, in building solar farms, etc. So they are coming in. But I think that the discussion here today makes it very evident also that once the political framework, once the politicians hopefully can get a committed uh, framework for global uh, usage. That will also help the financial sector to decide when and how they will go further. And that is very important for the transformation, that there is a combina combination of the financial system and the political commitment. Our second guest is Wayne Sharp. He is the CEO and founder of Carbon X Exchange, which is an exchange market for uh, carbon credits and which enables uh, companies to offset their carbon footprint by buying carbon credits. So what Carbon Trade Exchange does, a long way to answer your question, <laughs> is we provide an exchange-based facility where we don't own the credits, but any project can list their credits for sale and we promote them electronically to buyers on, on an exchange platform that operates 24-7 anywhere in the world, wherever you're connected to the internet. Could you simply explain why would companies invest in global environmental commodities? Well, they're not really investing. What they're doing is they're making a decision to remove their environmental impact from the planet's ecosystem. That's the reality of what an offset does. So I don't really see that it's an investment. It's basically it's an investment in their own corporate social responsibility, their own sustainability, and in sending the right message out to the business and or consumer community that wants to do or should do business with them. It also gives them the ability to control the impact their supply chain has on the environment. And, you know, whether we like to think about it or not, the global ecosystem is what every business is dependent on in order for survival for the future. So if they want to be in business 20 years from now, then they better be starting to think about what impact what they do today has in 20 years' time. Our third guest is Martin Hayes. He is the mayor of Adelaide. It's a city in Australia which is a forerunner in the field of carbon neutrality and they have set a very ambitious goal in 2025 for a carbon neutral city and we are going to see if he's going to make that. COP21 is of interest, I hope, to every mayor around the world and that's, there's a thousand mayors that have come to Paris within the last week to listen and to learn from each other and to share their best practice when it comes to climate, adaptation, sustainability, renewable energy, technology, a whole range of things. So we're here to learn from each other. Well, we've set a goal for 2025 for the City of Adelaide to be carbon neutral. So in order for us to achieve carbon neutrality within 10 short years, 
we have to look at everything. Now we've reduced carbon emissions by 20% already since 2007. At the same time, we've grown our economy by 28%. We've grown our residential base by 27%. We've grown the number of buildings and floor space in our city by 16%. So we've, we've decoupled that argument. Uh, basically, I thought I was being an environmentalist, kind of like you see here, not riding my bike, or riding my bike, not driving a car, taking short showers, doing what I could do that you hear about, all these things to do. And then I find out that animal agriculture is the leading cause of greenhouse gases more than all transportation put together. And then once I found that out, climate change is only one part of the entire issue of the environment. People get really focused on climate change, and animal agriculture is the number one or number two, not being talked about, but animal agriculture is also the leading cause of species extinction, leading cause of water consumption, leading cause of water pollution, ocean dead zones, uh, uh, rainforest destruction, land use, habitat destruction, the list goes on. One single issue all across the board. Um, and so once I found this out, I've realized the best way to live sustainably and ethically and a harmony with the planet and everyone is to glow vegan. The message is to tell the truth. You don't have to tell people what to do. You don't have to say go vegan or eat less. You don't have to say eat less meat. Just tell the truth. The truth that animal agriculture is the number one or the number one two of climate change and to tell the truth. That's all I have to do. Tell the truth and let people decide for themselves.